As a reminder of the purpose of all of these double integrals, I would like to consider the following situation. I would like to find the volume of the solid that is bounded between z equals 9 minus x squared minus y squared and the xy plane. Now, volumes are represented by double integrals, or rather, double integrals represent volumes of these sorts of things. Now, as soon as you see any sort of semblance of x squared plus y squared in one of these things, or as long as they have the same sign, that's really what we're going to be looking for. So what I'm going to do is convert to polar coordinates. Now, by converting to polar coordinates, I mean I'm going to take my z is equal to 9 minus x squared minus y squared and my xy plane, which is z equals 0, and try to figure out what those two things look like. Now, <clears throat> what we're really saying here is 9 minus the quantity x squared plus y squared, and making a conversion on that is going to give me 9 minus r squared. Now, this gives us an idea of what this is going to look like in terms of r and z. So in terms of r and z, so z equals 0 would represent the r-axis that represents the xy-plane. Now, z equals 9 minus r squared would look like a parabola. Vertex up here at z equals 9 and opening in the downward direction. This will intersect over here at an r value of 3, which we would get by setting z equal to 0. So what we're doing is we're taking this portion of a parabola, <coughs> excuse me, rotating this about the z-axis, and that will be the corresponding um, solid that's created. Now, in addition, I need to figure out our region of integration, which is going to be the intersection between this paraboloid and the xy-plane. So that would be 0 is equal to 9 minus x squared minus y squared, better known as x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. So within the xy plane, we would be talking about a circular region. So essentially, if we take this and consider this to be the portion that's coming out of the paper toward you in the z-axis, then we'd have the vertex somewhere up here and then the paraboloid opening in the downward direction toward the xy plane in all directions. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is set up what our volume would look like. Volume would be equal to the double integral over our region D of our function dA. Now, because this thing does look as round as it does, I do want to convert it into polar coordinates for our double integral. So three conversions that need to take place. First one is going to be the domain. Now, we've identified this as a circle of radius 3. <clears throat> we've also indicated over here that r would vary between 0 and 3. So with that in mind, r is going to go from 0 to 3, which again is represented by going from the pole out to the edge of the circle. And then for theta, we're going to need simply one full sweep around the xy plane. Recommended for that would be 0 to 2 pi. Now, as far as the integrand is concerned, we've already performed that up here. And the Jacobian of the transformation into polar coordinates, once again, is going to be r. So dA will be r dr d theta which means that we can convert this double integral into the following. The integral from 0 to 2 pi, and the integral from 0 to 3. The integrand becomes 9 minus r squared, and the differential dA becomes r times dr times d theta. Now with all of that in mind, once again we're going to be able to use Fubini's shortcut and separate into an integral in terms of theta and an integral in terms of r. In terms of theta, there is no theta, so this will simply be 1 d theta. For r, this will go from 0 to 3, and if we distribute the r through the set of parentheses, this will be 9r minus r cubed dr. Our first integral the integral of 1 is simply going to be 1 times the length of the interval, so that'll be 2 pi times 
integrating term by term, we will see 9 halves r squared minus 1 quarter r to the fourth. This will be going from 0 to 3. <clears throat> Continuing to simplify, we'll keep the 2 pi out front. This will be 9 halves times 3 squared minus 1 quarter times 3 to the fourth minus a lot of 0. And when we plug in that lower bound. So I'm seeing 81 halves minus 81 fourths. That's going to be 81 fourths. 2 pi times 81 fourths will give us 81 halves. Retaining the pi where it needs to be, that'll be 81 halves pi. Final answer. Ooh, there's a puppy outside. I'm going to go say hi. <laughs>